Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the main room. We will begin the next portion of the Meet Your Match uh, networking event, and we will go into the, the Annex portion, talking about Annex, what is unique about each funding partner. We'll also um, talk about eligibility for the call to make sure you hit those fine details. We will also have three special guests um, who are going to talk about uh, their organizational annex, organization's annex. Um, we will have, um, let me share, share my screen so you are all, you can all see what is coming up next. Uh, for those who are just joining, um, we have a Miro board where we have all the information you will need uh, with slides and with links. Um, if, uh, if one of the secretariat members can drop that into the link uh, and the chat function, that would be great. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the main room. Uh, my name is Brian Lung. If you have, if you have not got in, gotten the introduction earlier, uh, you're here for the Meet Your Match networking events uh, that's hosted by the Belmont Forum, and we're uh, collaborating with the IAI, uh, the Inter-American Institute for Global Environmental Change Research. We also have PAHU here, Pan American Health Organization, uh, as well as a World Meteorological Organization here uh, today. And we're going to announce and launch the call for Belmont Forum's Climate, Environment, and Health to call. I'm going to move on to the annex, and one of the secretariat members should have put the link to the mural board uh, where all the information you will need is in the um, is in that uh, website. This mural board looks like this. Um, I see everyone has filled out the um, the the map, but right now I want to focus on what makes this. Um, focus on this uh, particular call uh, for climate, environment, and health. So right now I will talk about the introduction to the annexes, how the annexes work, uh, and all of our uh, special partners here who are joining us today. We have uh, Dr. Anna Stewart, who is the science director for IAI, Inter-American Institute for Global Environmental Change Research. We also have PAHO here, uh, Dr. Daniel Bus, who will be presenting a little bit about what PAHO can provide to researchers. And then we also have uh, Dr. Barbara Tapia, who is from uh, the World Meteorological Organization, and she will talk about uh, what WMO can provide for the researchers who are on this call. And lastly, we will have Dr. Francisco Chesney, a representative of the Ministry of Health of Argentina, to guide us and inspire us to uh, align our the research projects to national goals. And with that, I'm going to go over to the right hand side of the Miro board if you want to follow along or watch the screen. Um, the annex details uh, are as described. There's four main points. They come in monetary. Um, they call they also also information about the duration of the call. Uh, there's personal require personnel requirements and as well as the contact information. The annex has what had information describing the monetary or in kind. Uh, so either it's a funding organization or an in-kind contribution. Remember, in-kind contributions can be more like project facilitation uh, and even helping you provide resources um, that not are necessarily mo money, but they are, are trainings and that your projects may need. The next portion is the maximum amount that can be provided uh, per project. There's some organizations have restrictions for how you can use uh, the money that's being provided, um, as well as um, the specific themes within the call. So some kind, some organizations say that you must do certain, uh, must uh, have some requirements that are unique for the climate environment health call. For example, South Africa has a very specific requirement, uh, National Research Foundation. And the currency, how much uh, money they're willing to provide, uh, and the dollar amounts or euro amounts. The personnel requirements are what countries are supported. Uh, in other words, which, uh, country, which researchers from what country are eligible. Um, the next is the description of the qualifications uh, for each of the eligible participants. Some must be researchers from an academic institution, some may not be. And the uh, number of researchers from one country can also be a, a uh, requirement as well. 
Um, next is uh, the duration, so that it could be three to four years, and it depends on the annex. And then the contact point, who you should contact and how to submit the proposal. So again, in summary, what I'm, uh, is the annex information has the maximum of funding amount per organization. Some more funding organizations have uh, personnel requirements. Some are three years and some are four years. And if you're in doubt or confused, there is a contact point for the agency for the specific funding organization. Remember, the CRA has each CRA or funding opportunity has eligibility uh, requirements. All project projects must include a researcher from at least three different countries seeking funding from at least three different funding sources or funding organizations identified in the call. Uh, the International Research Consortium must have, be transdisciplinary. And what that means is there must be three types of researchers, a natural scientist, a social scientist, and a non-academic stakeholder or an interested party member. Lastly, everyone in the group must be in the research team, um, must be working together to frame the problem and share equitable outputs, outcomes, and real world implementation. So it must link research to society. We will have more networking events at SRI. And if you want to uh, go to SRI's website to register, the link is right here in this upper right hand corner. Later on, after this call, we will have launched everything on BFGO, which is our online portal, portal to uh, submit your proposals. Next. These are the three, Anna, there are three special guests. We have Anna, Daniel, and Barbara from three different organizations who are here to tell the research, you all, all the researchers here, what is unique about the Belmont Forum call and what they can provide to help you with your research projects. The I, as, to access this, we have their Pacific Annex. You can click on the link here um, on the upper right hand corner. What I'll do next is I will, act, will bring you directly to the website for the uh, climate and environments and health call. The, I will share my screen again and you will be able to see the entire website. Um, if one of the secretariat members can put the link into the uh, chat, that will bring you directly to the website. Uh, I will share my screen starting now. This is the Belmont Forums website. On this call, this uh, tab here, you will see the CRAs, the funding opportunities. Within funding opportunities, here's climate, environment, and health. Within climate, environment, and health, all the resources that are located in this tab on this page. We have upcoming events for you to uh, register and also follow along and also network as well. If you need help, help to any in-kind provisions, uh, such as network uh, building, access to labs, or even subject matter experts, you can click here and make sure you provide a detailed description of your ask and research. And our in-kind partners will help connect you to those or try to help connect you to the, uh, the link that you're trying to make. All the annexes are located down below. You can see Uruguay, if you're from Uruguay, um, ANI is one of the um, funding organizations uh, funding Uruguayan researchers. If you would like to access um, IAI's um, annex, this is where it is located under annex and the countries that are supported by IAI. Future Earth all has many. And as you go down, you can see the full list of all, funding, of all funding organizations and in partner organizations and in kind partnerships with organizations that we have here. So here is WMO. As I scroll up, here is PAHO with their annex. If, you are, if you'd like to compare different types of annexes from different countries, we have the annex comparison tool. 
and you can select the organization that you are interested in and I'll, and you can compare them for example iai and let's say future earth and for me i'm uh you can do ukri and you can see those if you have any questions uh please put it into the chat and we'll have the secretariat members or we will try to we'll help to answer those questions And with that, what I would like to do is uh, to welcome those people who have just joined again. And I know I'm repeating myself, but my name is Brian Lung. I am the uh, one of the secretariat members from the Belmont Forum. And uh, I am here today to welcome you all for this networking event. And also this announcement, we will introduce uh, three special guests. Um, the first one is, um, and four, sorry, four special guests. The first one is Anna Stewart, uh, the science director of IAI. The second one is Daniel Bus from uh, from PAHO, Pan American Health Organization, and the third special guest is Barbara Tapia from um, from the World Meteorological Organization. And lastly, we will have Francesco Chesney, a representative from the Argentina's Argentina's Minister Ministry of Health. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass the floor to Anna, who will tell you all about what is special about the IAI uh, Annex and how IAI can help researchers on this call. You're welcome to speak in Spanish or uh, English. Thank you, Anna, Brian. You. Brian, buen día a todos y todas y gracias por su interés. Good morning, este... everyone, and thank you for your interest in this call, the CEH call, CRA2, launched by the Development Forum as the IAI we are very happy to support the participation of research teams from our member countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. As Brian has just said, you can go, uh, go over our annex to see which, which countries are eligible, but mainly Latin American and Caribbean IAI member countries. We will be providing funds up to $300,000 for a three-year period and uh, one um, one additional year may be added, and the amount depends on the number of countries participating. One country, one hundred thousand. Two countries, two hundred thousand. Three countries or more, three hundred thousand. I don't know if Brian has said this, but when we assess the proposals, the proposals that have the la the largest number of countries tend to get a a higher rating. So if you truly manage to build a strong consortium with three or more countries from the region, you will have more chances because that, uh, adv that adv advances IAI's mission, creating knowledge um, in the region and to, uh, to face challenges that countries cannot face individually. Also in the annex, you can see that the the potential expenses categories for research expenses. We usually we don't uh, fund, provide funds for research uh, salaries, but we want to fund the participation of other civil society or organizations and, and those uh, people that are not typical academic researchers in order to have equity, equitable participation, for instance, um, society members who participate in the projects. Also, there is a co-funding requirement. In the annex, you can go through the co-funding definition. Co-funding doesn't necessarily mean that you need to provide um, monetary funds. It's any other type of additional contribution, you estimate its value. It might be, for instance, the time uh, of the people participating, lab access, data access, um, the logistics of, I don't know, holding a meeting, infrastructure, access to servers, anything that the team can provide that has a value, that can be considered funding. And when you put together your budget, you estimate the funds. If, if you can include regional funds, that's amazing, of course. Uh, we've seen that when projects are implemented, many teams provide additional funds from other, other sources. And that would also be useful when it comes to implementing the project. 
Finally, remember that you need to go through the IEI's policies, our scientific agenda, our open data policy, because we require that every data uh, created be uploaded to an open, da uh, open data portal, and also our uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion um, a policy. When you set, uh, put, up your, uh, put together your proposal, remember this EDI policy. This uh, addresses the team's composition. There should be you know, equity, uh, but also how you um, uh, draft your research questions, if there is an EDI perspective or lens, and how you're, uh, you're actually going to do the work, on which the team members are as well. If you have a question or doubt, please contact us at the EIE, where the IAI. We are very happy to help you as you navigate this development forum, which takes some time at the beginning until you manage to, you know, understand the the dynamic. I know there will be very competitive proposals and excellent quality proposals. Thank you for your interest and effort. Uh, uh, thank you for participating in this call. Thank you, Brian, and everyone at the Belmont Forum Secretariat. Thank you, Daniel Bass and Barbara, who are here as well, my colleagues and friends. Thank you for your help. We've been working for over two years to be able to align this regional initiative. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, for those who just joined, um, we are going on to the next uh, special guest, uh, Daniel Bus, who is the unit chief of Pan American Health Organization, and he is here today. So with that, without further ado, I will pass the floor to him. Uh, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon to all, depending on where you are. Should I switch to Spanish or uh, is it fine to? Yeah. As you wish. Spanish is fine. Now, I was trying to see the uh, the audience here that we have, at least based on the last names or first names. I think I can switch to Spanish. Okay, I'll switch to Spanish so that we can have uh, balanced comments. The Pan American Health Organization, if you don't know us, if you don't know this, last year was our 120th anniversary. It, we are the, the oldest health authority in the world. Uh, as was said in the, this one uh, uh, at PAHO's 120th anniversary. It is the health agency within the uh, OAS. And then um, it, uh, after the, the creation of the WHO, it became the WHO's health agency for the Americas. We are based in Wa Washington, where our headquarters are. Uh, but we also have offices in several countries and territories in the Americas. We work with 35 countries and 18 territories in the Americas. And we also work with, uh, with uh, uh, WHO's headquarters in Geneva and, and with the regional offices in other parts of the world. So, uh, PAHO can work directly with uh, countries in the Americas or contact these countries with the uh, other offices throughout the world. So this is one of the possibilities with how we can create bridges uh, between different countries and sectors. We work directly with health ministries, but many of our topics, you know, climate change, uh, climate environment and health, air quality, waste management, among other environmental and health topics are closely related to environmental uh, finance and planning, agriculture ministries. So that's one of the possibilities when it comes to working with PAHO. We can, you know, uh, set up these connections with other countries, uh, ministries, 
and we can make the most of PAHO's technical capacity when it comes to implementing projects that are related to this topic. I can see some familiar names here. So um, this is no news to many of you, but it's important to highlight this special role uh, that PAHO has. For instance, sometimes it's difficult to um, work with or, or uh, contact uh, provincial, municipal, local, or national governments. And actually, PAHO is present in almost every country with their teams and with large PAHO teams sometimes in each country. And that can really help, you know, connect people. For instance, here we have Francesco Cesini, Francisco Cesini from Ministry of Health of Argentina, and he will be telling us about some of their experiences in Argentina. We also mobilize on resources with other partners, and this can help us within the Belmont Forum to build uh, bridges between projects, programs, and funding agencies. PAHO is one of the delivery partners of the Green Climate Fund. We can implement projects and handle projects with uh, Green Climate Fund funds. We uh, work with several collaboration agencies from the United States, for instance, the National Science Foundation, Holka from Korea or ERC Canada and other agencies from uh, Germany and other philanthropic organizations, Rockefeller Foundation, Wellcome Trust, etc. Therefore, we can uh, provide external support as well, or support that comes from outside the Belmont Forum. But we are here today to support this Belmont Forum structure because we believe that this is a major opportunity that is not really well known, at least in the health environment. And this, uh, this CEH call aims to um, focus on health. And I think this favors um, collaboration as well. So we're here to provide support, Brian. Um, and of course we can answer people's questions and keep talking to our colleagues. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel, for highlighting PAHO and the PAHO's role in climate, environment, and health call for, for the Belmont Forum. And thank you for joining us today. Our next uh, special guest is Barbara Tapia from the World uh, Meteorological Organization. And she's a technical coordinator on services for the regional office for the Americas. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Barbara Tapia. The floor is yours. You can speak in English or Spanish. <clears throat> Hola, Brian. Eh, muchas gracias. Espero que se escuche. Hello, Brian. Thank you. I hope you can hear me well. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, greet every person I know from here. And as Daniel was saying, maybe we're a bit older than the WHO, but not as well known. So this is my opportunity to tell you the reach of the uh, WMO, especially in the Americas. Our organization was created um, uh, from the International Meteorological Organization. It's its 150th anniversary. It is based in Geneva and it has regional offices in the Americas, Africa, Asia. It's been part of the UN since nine, uh, 1950. It specializes in weather, climate, and water. It, it has 193 um, member parties, and we, we have representatives from meteorological and water national organizations. We have co-founded and hosted the IPCC, and we have 13 global centers and 11 regional centers that provide short and mid-term forecasts. We promote uh, the work of meteorological services, the academia, and the private sector. We work with, uh, we provide meteorological climate and water related data. And, and also we work with creating and maintaining different types of systems regarding pro uh, 
um, provision, providing these data. We have created guidelines and standards when it comes to observations and follow-up in order to guarantee a unit and also standards for uh, well procedures. We provide services that have to do with the weather, climate and water by applying science and technology, meteorology and hydrology in order to reduce uh, disaster risks and to contribute to climate change adaptation. We also work with air, um, water and land transport. We work with uh, managing water resources, agriculture, health, energy, etc. And we also coordinate research and meteorology training. Our America's regional office in Paraguay, where I work, uh, how can we support these researchers, especially we can help them uh, get in touch with these or, or work with these aspects? And they work mainly by developing different types of service delivered to the community uh, regarding aviation, meteorology, uh, disaster risk reduction, and hydrology, and also other topics such as infrastructure. As Daniel has said, we also have co-funding from the uh, Dacian Cruz project that focuses on the Caribbean. There are other projects and where we can work together to implement different activities. If you need us, we can help connect you with uh, meteorological services throughout the Americas so that you can obtain data and also work with the activities that take place within the meteorological service and do uh, joint TV work as is the aim of the Belmont Forum. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know and let me know how you can help you, how, how I can help you as well from our uh, regional office. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barbara Tapia. That was wonderful. Um, and thank you for our three special guests um, for describing what they can do, uh, what their organizations, these organizations can do for um, researchers here on this call and for all researchers on the, for climate, environment, and health. Our next special guest is uh, Francisco Chesney. He is a representative of the Ministry of Health in Argentina and he is one of the uh, National Risk Reduction Program uh, members uh, for health associated with climate change. And uh, with that, I would like to pass the floor to Francisco, Francisco, Francisco Chesney. Um, and he can, you're happy to speak in English or uh, Spanish. Bueno, buenos días, muchas gracias. Eh, Good morning. Thank you to every participant. First of all, thank you to PAHO, the Belmont Forum, the IAI, for inviting us to share Argentina's experience in this major webinar. I would like to thank the IAI in particular because thanks to its climate and health institutions, uh, you organized a workshop in 2011 in Uruguay, and I started working in the area because of that workshop. And this has allowed me to include the topic in the agenda of our Ministry of Health in Argentina. So this shows us that these training and interaction for are very important. I would also like to highlight the role of the pandemic when it comes to showing the interrelation between environmental, animal, and human health. Also, I need to say that climate change is a similar challenge when it comes to scale and the need to uh, work jointly uh, in the area of health. I would like to tell you about the NDCs as they were submitted to for the second time to the UNFCCC. And because of the pandemic, then health became uh, 
the most important uh, part of our agenda. Um, health is very important within our climate policy. And we considered health regarding adaptation, but also when it comes to mitigation. We um, presented an action to assess the carbon footprint of the health system and to reduce its consequences. A, a study was conducted very recently. It showed that the health sector contributes 2.07% to national emissions. And this is equal to um, uh, a large amount of uh, carbon dioxide. Also, we have developed uh, an adaptation, uh, a plan, a national adaptation plan to climate change. It was uh, uh, adopted by last year by the ministerial cabinet. And this is a structure that uh, includes several uh, ministers. This plan focuses on health as a cross-cutting issue. This allowed us to classify the health impacts of over 160 sector-specific actions in the areas of energy, forests, transport, and waste. Also within the ministry, the National Ministry of Health, we have focused on climate change um, by developing three tools. Number one, a national program to reduce risk, health risks related to climate change. Uh, this uh, program coordinates a specific uh, climate change and health panel. Also, it is a focal, the ministry's focal point that represents the ministry in the National Climate Change Cabinet. That was number one. Tool number two, the climate change and health uh, panel. Uh, they aim to mainstream climate change in health policies and plans because they understand that climate change is not a, just a health issue, but it actually affects every aspect of public health. This panel includes 10 areas. For instance, uh, health emergencies, non-communicable diseases, uh, elderly people, uh, perinatal health and childhood, vectors, zoonosis. It is coordinated by the national health coordination sector. Tool number two, the climate change national strategy. It aims to decrease uh, mobility and mortality related to climate change variability and to develop a resilient climate health based on evidence and low in emissions. It includes 20 actions, 14 adaptation, three uh, mitigation and three cross-cutting actions. Finally, uh, I can tell you that in the last few years, actually since May 2022, we have been implementing a readiness Im implemented uh, funded by the Green Climate Fund, and our developing partner is PAHO. This project was uh, actually oh, started to be planned in 2020. We worked with our colleagues from PAHO Argentina. We wrote this project to submit it to the Green Climate Fund. The project aims to strengthen the, the health sector and to coordinate climate action nationally and subnationally. Argentina is a federation. This is why we have 24 ministers of health, one in each province. And they uh, are the, the health authority in each province. We have selected three provinces that represent different regions. Misiones, uh, Argentina's Northwest, Neuquén, Patagonia, and Tucumán, and Northeast. This project has developed uh, uh, panels inside the Ministry of Health, and we have developed provincial uh, health plans. We have also estimated the benefits of mitigation actions at the local level. For instance, active transport or urban green spaces. We are now beginning a consultancy to estimate the carbon footprint of three hospitals, one per province. The idea is to have the necessary technical capacity to replicate this tool in other health sectors. This process that I have briefly told you about has been 
supported by the academia. In 2019 and 2020, we uh, organized two workshops, 2019 International Workshop, 2020 uh, 20, uh, a National Workshop. The idea is to develop a National Climate and Health Observatory. Many of the of these observatory participants are here in this meeting today. Um, there was a project that was awarded a seed grant by the EIE. In this way, we are taking the first step to uh, develop this uh, platform to integrate CEH data. Finally, I would like you to I would like to invite you to consider getting funds from the development forum because CEH funding with a TD uh, perspective is a great opportunity in our region so that we can continue creating um, scientific evidence that supports the consolidation of health policies uh, in connection with climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Francisco Chesney, uh, for joining us today and for helping uh, all the researchers here um, with uh, guiding and aligning your uh, interests uh, with to uh, Argentina's national goals. And with that today, I would like to thank all our participants uh, and uh, researchers here for joining our uh, first networking uh, 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 event uh, that's hosted by Belmont Forum. BII, PAHO, and the World Meteorological Organization. And, uh, and thank you all for, uh, for coming. I want to, uh, before we close today, I want to highlight a couple main points. I want to point out, first, I want to point out the, uh, the um, couple of dates that are upcoming. On April 17th, uh, we have the uh, on April 17th, we have the uh, Facebook Live events. We will be providing information on uh, for how to navigate the BFGO websites if you would need help or whatever uh, Belmont Forum CRA you have questions about. Um, on the 26th, we have some, an event called Be Belmont Eligible. And what this event will be about is um, how we will have a reviewer who will describe um, what are the things that, that reviewers look for in a transdisciplinary call? Um, and as well as a, a researcher who has been funded by the Belmont Forum to talk about what makes a successful transdisciplinary project. Um, that will be on April 26th. Again, all this information is on our website. And uh, two more events that are upcoming uh, on uh, May the 3rd we have a, another networking event uh, where we will bring in previous researchers from Climate, Environment, and Health One and provide you, access, uh, provide you a space to meet them and learn best practices. Uh, these projects range from, range from early warnings of zoonotic diseases to uh, early warning systems related to diarrheal diseases in Southeast Asia, or even heat uh, stroke. Um, and uh, health for workers in agriculture. So there are many, many uh, different and diverse topics and projects um, that will be present on that day. And all this information is on our website, just a reminder, belmontforum.org uh, and under CRA. Um, 